Item Number SCP-1035 Object Class Safe Special Containment Procedures SCP-1035 is to be kept at Site-19's Biological Storage Facility while research into its properties continue. Level 3 researchers assigned to the project may request the use of SCP-103 for research provided that the requisition forms for D-Class personnel are filled at least one week prior. Materials that have been exposed to SCP-1035 for extended periods of time are to be treated as Class II biohazards and incinerated. Description SCP-1035 is a pink woolen mitten, probably handmade, intended to be worn by a small child. Interviews with the family suggest that another mitten of similar appearance was lost up to months prior to discovery. Its current location and whether it shares SCP-1035's effects are unknown. It is difficult to determine the precise date and time at which SCP-1035 began to manifest its effects, although extrapolation from currently available medical records suggests that the effects first began in late February 19... SCP-1035 first came to the attention of the Foundation as a result of a Foundation asset embedded at Memorial Hospital, who at the time was investigating a possible... As a result of his position at the hospital, he was a witness to the death of Sally during emergency surgery, the first recorded fatality as a result of long-term SCP-1035 exposure. All civilians involved, including the parents of the child and medical staff, were administered varying doses of amnetics, and a cover story was spread involving a case of necrotizing fasciitis. Shortly thereafter, Agent was able to safely recover SCP-1035 from the family. Any organic matter placed within SCP-1035 begins to enter a rapidly accelerated state of decomposition. Short-term exposure of SCP-1035, less than about two consecutive hours, is usually not harmful to a healthy human being. The human immune system is generally able to cope with the effects of SCP-1035. Visible symptoms will begin to be displayed approximately two hours after exposure, and by 24 hours, health complications will usually progress to the point that the subject's death is inevitable. Non-living substances, non-human life, human subjects with pre-existing health conditions may experience different effects from exposure to SCP-1035, especially for a more comprehensive outline of SCP-1035's effects and an overview of experimentation on SCP-1035, see document-1035- Exposure to SCP-1035 is cumulative and repeated short-term exposure to SCP-1035 can be fatal. Humans who have experienced two hours of exposure to SCP-1035 may require over a week to return to full health. The following chart is based on information from document-1035- and details the typical progression of symptoms in human subjects affected by SCP-1035. Table Less than two hours of exposure. No visible effects. White blood cell counts are affected in subjects and may fluctuate slightly. Between two to four hours of exposure. Subjects report slight tenderness in affected areas. Affected area, especially joints, may appear to be inflamed or swollen. White blood cell count in the affected area plummets. Between four to six hours of exposure. Subjects report discomfort and soreness when attempting to move affected areas. Small patches of affected area may appear lighter than surrounding areas, possibly as a result of the between six to eight hours of exposure. Open sores begin to develop in the affected areas and any pre-existing injuries become greatly aggravated. Abnormal amounts of serous fluid may leak from these sores. Between eight to 10 hours of exposure, Subject begins to display symptoms of sepsis. Toxins from the affected area, especially, will begin to spread to the rest of the body. Between 10 and hours of exposure. Abnormal fungal growth has been observed in 
1% of test subjects at this stage. Subjects may contract various non-fatal illnesses during this stage as a result of complete immune system failure. Between and hours of exposure. More than 24 hours of exposure. Almost total necrosis of affected regions. By this point, the combined effects of septic shock and will have but all ensured the death of the subject. Subjects have survived late stage SCP-1035 exposure for as long as days following extraordinary life-saving work by medical personnel. Amputation is effective in preventing other body parts from experiencing the effects of SCP-1035. Request to test SCP-1035 in conjunction with SCP-500 and other medical-based SCPs has been denied. Supplemental Material The following is a transcript from an interview that took place on February 19... Agent How are you feeling, Sally? Feel... cold. I can't feel my arm. Will I be okay? Agent Sure you will. I just need to ask a few questions. When did you first put on that pink mitten? I don't know. Does it matter? Agent. It does. Please answer the question. I don't know. Last week? It was a present. Grandma made it. Will I? Agent. You'll be fine. Now, Sally, we're going to have to operate on your arm. It won't hurt. They won't let me see my arm, Doctor. Does it look better? Please. At this point, the patient began crying and would not respond to further questions. Agent. This interview is over. The medical staff here wants us to amputate. There's nothing more to learn by studying her symptoms, and there's no way that she'll live with that arm. This one's for anomalous infections to sort out. Agent. Signing off. Note. Despite heroic life-saving attempts, Sally died due to complications from exposure with SCP-1035. The family was later interviewed by the Foundation personnel. Nothing extraordinary was unearthed from the later investigations. Surveillance of the family was lifted on March 19. Second note. The following is a transcript of an interview with Dr. who founded the project. Doctor, once the initial 24-hour period has passed, it is safe to say that further decay of the affected areas does not occur. In fact, the increased rate of decomposition has only been observed in subjects completely enclosed within SCP-1035. So for example, if I stick my hand in this thing, before long, that hand's going to rot off. But my shoulder should be all right. That doesn't mean, of course, that the rest of my body will be perfectly fine. Have you read up on warfare back in, say, the 19th century? One of the really big problems back then was gangrene and things like that. You know, what happens when parts of you die. Not good. Oftentimes, the areas hit really bad end up as basically massive bacterial breeding centers. It's not a problem you want to deal with. It doesn't even take into account the way the thing speeds everything up. You think Clostridium perfringens is bad? Try Schistosoma. Hell, we've identified close to a hundred new parasites with this. Requesting more D-Class personnel for further experimentation. There's a lot that we could learn from this. Adenum. Since the writing of this article, additional subjects of clothing have been recovered by the Foundation agents, bearing similar properties to SCP-1035. These objects are awaiting SCP classification and are to be designated SCP-1035-2 through the original instance of SCP-1035 will be redesignated as SCP-1035-1. The project has been tasked with examining the properties, applications, and source of SCP-1035 instances. Off the record. SCP-1035 clearly tends to inspire an immune response within humans 
but by what vector does it enter the body? Typically, the skin you have on your body protects you from a whole host of infections you might normally receive just by living your daily life. The doctor mentioned earlier how gangrene was an issue back during the early 19th century warfare, and he is absolutely correct. Something as simple as a small scratch, which we take for granted that our bodies will actually handle now through properly cleaning a wound and maintaining it, could become infected quite easily during the conditions of the environment over 100 years ago. While some medicines did exist, the idea of washing out wounds and maintaining them, more so considering the strapped resources associated with warfare, meant that soldiers likely did nothing of the sort, which in fact did result in gangrene. The more grievous a wound, the higher probability that infection would ultimately take you out. The interesting aspect of this, however, is that it would take a few days to continue to infect and destroy tissue. In some cases, your immune system was able to overcome the influx of bacteria, but in most cases, it was not possible and the infected would expire. It seems like a distant memory for humanity, but even today, we still face a lot of the same issues. Should a person be badly burned, the biggest issue we run into with treatments is skin degradation and infections. The barrier between the body and the world is broken, and thus an infection is able to take hold. Once this happens, we thankfully have antibiotics to combat the disease progression, but this is not guaranteed to work as bacteria becomes more and more antibiotic resistant. And because of this, we could continue to see our treatments falter even further in the future. Concerning SCP-1035, it's clear what is happening in the body in some capacity, but a pattern must first be established. Upon putting on the gloves, a few possibilities of what's happening considering what the body is undergoing begin to arise. Either the first and most obvious possibility is that the skin is being broken down. In light of the effects of SCP-1035 and what it has on microorganisms, as in accelerating the infection process, this same process may be breaking down the skin of a person. This is the most likely possibility as the immune system is able to keep up at first and combat the invading pathogens as they slowly leak through the skin, through the microscopic holes being formed. As the host continues to wear these mittens, the holes will enlarge in the skin, causing decomposition, allowing for more bacteria into the body, and this will put the immune system on its back foot as it's overwhelmed. Once this bacteria spreads into the blood, it is free to travel and infect, inducing gangrene in the host. The other possibility is that SCP-1035 has a more individual effect on cells within the confines of itself, and then can induce an infection internally what's already inside the host. Quite possibly in this aspect, the immune system enters a form of autoimmune reaction and begins attacking the skin and tissue. This is also a possibility as old wounds are inflamed and aggravated. The most reasonable thinking associated with this option is that the pain in the joints as they are inflamed by the attacking immune system. And this may render the skin damaged and fragile as a result, much like with what we see with psoriasis, which in turn could let in more bacteria, inspiring the infections that we have seen associated with septic shock and opportunistic infections, such as the fungal growth seen within 10 hours of exposure. The immune system is failing to do its job as it's either launching an attack on itself and the body, or it is overwhelmed by the invading pathogens and quickly depleted. I believe based on the symptoms that we see with SCP-1035, it may even be a combination. It's clear the SCP has an effect on the microorganisms that is still not fully understood based on the acceleration of mitotic abilities of these cells, whether they be bacterial or fungal, or even possibly a suppression of the innate immune system when confronting these pathogens. However, it's not entirely implausible to think that the gene expressions are being changed, which in turn causes the cell receptors and markers to change, which could cause the body to attack itself, opening it up to opportunistic infections from the environment or that the skin is damaged in some way from the degradation of genes, quickly causing the cells to burst, leading to issues which in turn allows more bacteria and fungal spores in, which causes them to flourish through increased mitotic activation. Never forget, something as simple as ultraviolet radiation, which we can't see, can alter your genes. Should this particular SCP be radiating some form of energy, even radiation itself, genes could be severely altered, completely disabling the host body locally, to the confines of SCP-1035. All right, guys, I hope you uh, liked that at the end there. I heard that you guys did like the off-the-record part, so there you go. I 
it's kind of cool to write, and I definitely enjoyed it. Anyhow, thank you guys for watching. I hope everyone enjoyed. If you did, leaving a like would be great, and subbing is a great way to stay up to date on when I post. I had somebody complain in the comments uh, last time saying that I was copying, but I'm not really sure how you're not supposed to read the SCP. I mean, I think we're all doing that, right? Anyhow, I enjoy it, and I write everything at the end myself, so... I don't really know what to tell you on that front. Anyhow, uh, I appreciate you guys watching. I hope you guys have a good weekend. This should be out, I think, Saturday. And yeah, all right. I'll see you on the next one.